Cool. Uh, yeah, thank, thank, thanks for that, guys. That was smooth. Uh, anyway, uh, where were we in the uh, festival playlist? Uh, yeah, um, right. We were at the trial for Autumn, which was uh, where you can win the Plymouth Fury in, a, in an event called Act of Rod. Um, and then we got a returning showcase remix, The Forest Sprite. Autumn Games, you can pick up in Mercedes-Benz X-Class. It's been a while. It's yeah. been a long time, yeah. Uh, Summit or Nothing for the VW Golf 2010. Fun fact about the Fiat Dino is that is the rarest car in Forza Horizon 4. Only 2,000 or something mm -hmm. people Why have rare? one of those. Hmm? Why is it that rare? I don't know. <laughs> Just this. <laughs> thanks, thanks for the insight. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like, like we bring um, you on for your punditry. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, and then from Let's Bug Out, you can get the, the Hummer H1. Um, then in winter, we have the another new exclusive car, the ATS GT. And the McLaren 12C also making a return there at 80% completion. Uh, from the trial, you can grab yourself an amazing ski hat. And then from the Winter Games, you can get the uh, Chevrolet Colorado ZR2. And I've accidentally skipped over our new showcase remix, which is Morning Rush. Yes, we'll be we'll taking a look at that in a little while. Jinx. Um, and then we've got Jeepers Creepers, where you can pick up the Jeep Cherokee. And uh, the Ford, uh, the Bertie Design F-150, the pre-runner, that yep. was uh, really cool. What series did that come out in? Was it 15? Yeah, Series 15. Yeah, so you can grab that again in, uh, in this seasonal championship. And then last but not least, we've got Snow Going Back, where you can get the 720S Spider. Then into spring, where we have um, the Diablo GTR, probably one of the best cars from the 90s, I think. Got a bit of an Italian theme going on with the cars. Absolutely. Um, you can complete the trial, uh, bring home the bacon to uh, win the Chevy Impala 1996. Uh, the Spring Games is where you can get the Pontiac Transamerica. Um, and then we've got the RDR making a return in a seasonal championship called the Old Smoky. Uh, Velociraptor returns, making a second debut. Um, where you can win. Second <laughs> debut? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Where you can win the, uh, the Ford Raptor uh, 2011 and. Uh, complete the street scene sunset for the Buick GSX. How much of the design team's time is spent coming up with the puns for festival playlists? It's actually the only, that's like the only thing that takes any time. The rest of this kind of just does itself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a good job, Liz. Yeah, yeah. So, so those we, actually have, we actually have an uh, entire staff whose job is just to think of puns. Um, <laughs> the pun designer. Whoops. Well, well done, Anna. And All right. Uh, Yes, well done to Anna and Matt. They are two of our new designers, and that was, I think it's some great work in there. I'm sure you guys are really going to enjoy it throughout Series 16. Guys, let's take a look at some of those new cars. Yep. All right, I'll hand over to you. So, probably should show the one. Uh, we know everyone's been uh, asking for this for uh, Diablo. Should we? Okay, let's do the piece. Yeah, we know. We know that uh, you guys have uh, been asking for. Uh, many, many months now for this car, so it's awesome that we can finally bring it in. Um, and the reason we have a bunch of Italian cars this month is because of this car. Um, we had enough kind of coming in that we felt a celebration of Italian uh, supercars, essentially. So that sounds really well. Oh, it's, it's, it's driving really well in the snow. Yeah, it's great. Uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful car. So based on the 488, obviously. Um, so this is a bit like the Challenge Finale, the Fourth Oaks Gunnaria and the 458 Speciale. Um, so, this is the more track orientated version of the 408. So, it powers up to just north of 700, right. 11 or something like that. More downforce, less weight, um, all around an incredibly impressive car. Yeah, apparently, it's not 16, 2.9 seconds, which is just. I, I don't understand how rear wheel drive cars are getting with it. Um, yeah. Absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal car. So I believe they're going to go into this in a lot more detail on the Ford Monthly after us, um, where they have one in the studio as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah. Yes. So uh, Chris did a great job yeah. there of reminding you all that immediately after our show is the Ford Monthly. So uh, sit in, get yourself some popcorn. There's loads of Ford's coming up over the next couple of hours. So uh, probably showing enough of this one now. Yeah, we can come back to it a little bit later. Yeah. Let's have a look. I'll drive around a bit later on. Um, what am I doing? <laughs> I, I have a thing on, on streams where I always get lost yeah, in the UI. Good idea, let's check out the uh, what level we're at in this <laughs> <laughs> campaign. Level 10, good job. Got to wait for Kira yeah. now as well. well. We're at perfect time to talk about our new subtitles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, Very cleverly uh, uh, segued there. <laughs> so you may have noticed there, guys, that we've uh, redone the way we do our subtitles. Uh, our old way, where we boxed them out in the corner, was 
a way of showing subtitles, um, but I think it wasn't really useful to those people who need it the most. Uh, so there's a bunch of new subtitling options, like to tune how they appear, and alter the background, change text size, all those kind of things. So if you're someone who uses subtitles or even needs subtitles, then well, hopefully there's settings in there that you'll enjoy this update. So back onto the cars. Um, this is the ATS GT. Um, so ATS were an Italian brand back in the late 60s, I believe, that did a car called the GT. Um, so this is a kind of a modern take on it, uh, of the brand coming back. It's uh, weirdly, it's an Italian design car, but uses McLaren running gear. So it's got the 720S engine in it. So it's an horsepower, rear wheel drive. Um, really pretty looking car, um, as you expect. Uh, coming out of Italy. The front end in particular is absolutely yeah. Really the real end as well. It reminds me of, I want to say, funnily enough, from uh, earlier on, the remake of the Julia, I think it's called the TZ2, TZ3, sorry, the concept yeah. car. Kind of reminiscent of that. Yeah. I'm really struggling to drive it this time. <laughs> Yeah. 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 So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to jump to the next car, which is on slick tyres, which is going to make this even easier. Um, Diablo GTR. Um, so, as Matt said, one of the most iconic kind of 90 supercars. This is the. It, it was a race car. This wasn't it. They did. Yeah. They did race. They're, is this a homologation special? Um, this was the full-on race variant of it. Uh, they, they did a, a one night series. This is like the ultimate evolution of the Diablo. It is, yeah. It is. It's, it's a particular rare beast because Lamborghini never made a race car. It's yeah. always the other manufacturer down the road with the, with the plants and horse. But they did all of the racing cars. It's like Lamborghini focused purely on, on road mm -hmm. And then they, all of a sudden they decided they're going to do this. And this is uh, I couldn't actually tell you. <laughs> but I think, I think it's successful in that, you know, it looks it's, it's it, looks it does look yeah. absolutely it's amazing. It's become an icon. Of, sort of that 90s yeah. supercar thing. It's like all carbon fibre, I think, was it except for the roof and the doors? Was that the, yeah. Um, so a very um, kind of cutting edge for when it was built. Um, full carbon cars were pretty rare. Yeah. Um, so, oh, the nice Diablo was, was like a super important car for Lamborghini as well because yeah. they, they went through some really, really rough times of like financial status and being bought and then sold and bought and then sold before finally becoming what they are now as part of the Volkswagen Audi group. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this, this really sort of saved them, the Diablo did, and this is, uh, it's, I guess, the ultimate version of that car. So it's yeah. cool to have it in, in the game. The last of the rear-wheel drives. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, this, this car doesn't do, do drifts very well. And apparently I can't drive today either. Another chance to see the new subtitles next in there. <laughs> Uh, so yep, uh, this one's great, and the last one for the series, jumping back into another prancing horse now. Uh, I'll try and not get lost in the UI. This is the 512S, so this was built to compete against the Porsche 917. Okay. Um, so 1970s. Uh, Ferrari, uh, Ferrari actually took a year out of uh, kind of Le Mans prototype racing in 68, um, when Porsche uh, came in with the 917. It was actually after, sorry, after Ford came out uh, conveniently with the film came out now. Um, Ford came out with their 7 litre uh, GT40s, which were incredible. Um, Ferrari took a year out to build this, so this is a 5 litre V12, hence 512 name, and went on to be then modified into 512M and raced for quite some time. And I think it was quite successful. I think it won Sebring and 12 hours, uh, debuted at 12 hours of Sebring, I think. I think won 24 hours of Monza, something like that. I absolutely love the zero cars. Yeah. Like yeah. When we looked at the Porsches and then just got these mad aerodynamics, they're so cool. Yeah. You can see the learning, yes. can't you, as you progress through from sort of like the 60s and the 70s. Yeah, and these cars like raced at the absolute limit of mechanical grip as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, these were over engined. Like mass oh, the snow. Oh, well done, the snow. Yeah, hugely, <laughs> hugely over engined. Um, this was actually a little bit heavier than the 917 counterpart, but um, actually they competed very well next to each other. Um, so you say this was an evolution of, was it the P3? Um, it came after the P3, but yeah, kind of built on the technologies there. The P3 used a 3-litre V12, I think, because... Um, so Porsche got around the, the regulations a little bit with the 917. Um, you're only allowed a 3-litre engine, um, 
which was fine for Ferrari because they were building them with the F1 cars as well. Um, but Porsche found a way around it. They homologated 25 917s, and with that, they were allowed to use a 5 litre. Um, so they kind of dominated for a small period. Okay. okay. Um, guys, I know, like me, you very much love the creativity of our community. Uh, we're going to take a quick break to take a look at some of the photos that those guys are making for this month's photo competition. Uh, let's roll the tape.